Father, we thank you so much for this precious gift of this day. We love you and we honor you for allowing us to arrive at this moment. Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have just to be here. Darren, I love you. You are a gift from God. I thank you for loving me the way that you do and loving so selflessly. She's a woman that I've always wanted and uh, I'm happy this is the day that we are finally coming to a culmination of what I feel like was our destiny from the beginning. And I love him.
produces what in marriage? I do. Oh, you you take your breath, sir, and step forward. I would like to ask the congregation to please remain standing as we go before the Father for a word of prayer. And you two need to face me. <laughs> Can't start them Google eyes already. <laughs> Let's bow our heads, please. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of the privileges afforded us as being members of the body of Christ. We've come together today to watch the miracle of your love and the power of your spirit at work in the lives of Rhonda and Daryl. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives to bring us into a place of union with the Father, union with the Son, union with the Holy Spirit, and union with one another. We thank you for it in Jesus' precious name. Jesus. Amen. 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 You may be seated. All right, you two. <laughs> we are finally here. <laughs> I hear a big amen somewhere. <laughs> That's shouting ground right there. And come on, somebody. As I read scriptures from the fifth chapter of the book of Ephesians, I want you both to pay very close attention to the words stated here. These are the words from God's own word that the Holy Spirit will honor as we stand on them in faith. The world has the idea that marriage is simply a legal contract, and while it's a legal contract indeed, and we don't make light of that fact, at the same time, it's a spiritual contract. So when the words of faith from the word of God are spoken according to the word of God, between two born-again believers, the power of God goes into operation. There is an actual miracle that takes place when the faith of these two people is released in God's power. God honors their faith and brings them into union, brings them into oneness together. With these thoughts in mind, listen very carefully to these words from Ephesians 5. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own, your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as they love their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hateth his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Daryl, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? Yes, sir. Have you received the Holy Spirit to dwell in you? Yes, sir. Rhonda, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? Yes, sir. Have you received the Holy Spirit to dwell in you? Yes, sir. Now, upon public profession of your faith, you have made known to everyone here and to all on the earth that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is your Lord and your Savior. So I make this announcement before this congregation and the witnesses who are gathered here today. When two people join themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ by faith, according to God's own words and God's own statement, they stand cleansed. As clean before God as Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden before they sinned. Now, this is not just a forgiveness of sin. The Bible says that any man in Christ is an entirely new creation. Old things have passed away, and all things have become new. A miracle took place when you made Jesus the Lord of your lives. The Holy Spirit used the very power of God, his creative power, to cause your spirit to be reborn. It's the same power that God used when he raised Jesus from the dead, and he will join you two together today by that power. When two born-again believers come before God to be joined together as husband and wife, the Apostle Paul calls it a mystery and says, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. 
when you made Jesus the Lord of your lives. You were joined to him. 1 Corinthians 6 and 17 says you are one spirit with him. In Ephesians it says that you have become one flesh with the Lord. You are his. He is yours. You are one together in him. So I want you to understand that if you rightly discern the body of Christ, then you rightly discern the miracle that takes place in marriage. Your spirits will be joined together and you will become one. You will not be one just in the eyes of the law, but there is something much more powerful that will happen today. The very creative power of God will join you two together. The same power that joined you with Jesus when you made him your Lord will join the two of you together as one. Don't ever tamper with that union. The love of God doesn't say, I love you, but do you really love me? The love of God says very simply, I love you. That's all it ever says. So don't ever tamper with that miracle. Don't ever let the sun go down on your wrath. Something holy, something beyond reproach will take place by the Spirit of God inside your bosom. And it is a precious thing. I'd like to speak to the witnesses who are gathered here today. Jesus said in the 18th chapter of Matthew's Gospel, Again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done of them of my Father which is in heaven. Now you're not here just because of tradition, but you're here for a very, very serious purpose. To bear witness forever of the union that will take place today. And to add your agreement before God to that which takes place today. So don't ever, ever tamper with that agreement. From this day forward, regardless of what comes, you are in agreement and in full support of this union. Don't ever attempt in any way to cause it to be anything other than a happy union. Amen? Amen. I'd like to also address the congregation gathered to witness these proceedings today. In the eyes of Almighty God, these two people are washed in the blood of, the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They have prayed, and before the Lord God himself, they believe with all their hearts that it is the perfect will of God for them to be joined together in the Spirit. They have made their decision so from now until the end of this age, I charge you to do everything in your power to see that this union remains solid and strong and happy and prosperous. Woe be to any person who would tamper with it and cause it to be anything other than prosperous in the eyes of God. This is a miraculous thing, and it is of God. Amen? Amen. Daryl? Do you take Rhonda as your wife, as your own flesh, to love her even as Christ loves the church, to protect her and care for her for the rest of your lives? I do. Then turn to her and make this profession of your faith. I, Daryl. I, Daryl. According to the word of God. According to the word of God. Leave my father. Leave my father. And my mother. And my mother. And I join myself. And I join myself. To you. To you. To be a husband. To be a husband. To you. To you. From this moment forward. From this moment forward. We shall be one. We shall be one. Rhonda, do you take Daryl as your husband? Submitting yourself to him as unto the Lord. Showing reverence to him as the head of this union for the rest of your lives. I do. Then turn to him and make this profession of your faith. I, Rhonda. I, Rhonda. According to the word of God. According to the word of God. Submit myself to you. Submit myself to you. To be a wife to you. To be a wife to you. From this moment forward. From this moment forward. We shall be one. We shall be one. May I have the groom's ring, please? Now, a ring is a very precious thing. It's a token of your faith and of your love. This ring is made of precious metal, which means it's a never-ending circle that indicates the continuing love of God. A love that is never haughty, never presents itself puffed up. The love of God and the faith of God is what causes his power to operate in your lives. So I want you to wear these rings as a continual reminder of your faith, a continual reminder of the confession of faith you have made to each other and to God. The word of God says, above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. If anyone could break up this union, it would be Satan. So give him no place. Give him no place. This is forever. And I said bride's ring, but I looked at her. Praise the Lord, everybody. So take this ring. Place it on her finger. And as you do, say to her, with this ring, 
with this ring? I thee wed. I thee wed. It is a token. It is a token. Of my love for you. Of my love for you. And a token. And a token. Of my faith. Of my faith. That I release now. That I release now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now a ring can mean two different things, Mr. Groom. It can be a never-ending sign of love, or it can be a shackle around your foot. So I'm going to charge you with a memory that you should recall always. This woman stands by your side, not under your feet. You have the responsibility, she's like, amen. You have, <laughs> you have the responsibility of being the head of this union, which means you have the spiritual responsibility in giving your heritage. I know you know what that means. But I want you to wear this ring in remembrance that she is your help, suitable for you. It must never be a shackle of dominance, but always a reminder of faith and love. So I want you to place this ring on his finger with these things in mind. There's no place in the word of God that gives people the right to dominate one another. Your vows have stated that you submit to one another in the responsibilities of this life, expecting God and his power to always make the difference. So place this ring on his finger. And as you do, say to him with this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. I give it. I give it as a token. As a token of my faith. Of my faith. I believe. I believe with all my heart. With all my heart that this is forever. That this is forever. It is my love. It is my love and my faith. And my faith in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Join your right hands, please. They got it right the first time. You'd be surprised how many times I have to say your other right. <laughs> as a representative of Jesus Christ before Almighty God, in the name of the Father of his son Jesus, and by the power of the Holy Spirit of God, I now pronounce you one together. You are husband and wife. <laughs> now let's prepare to receive communion. Now both of you are believers, have received the communion table in the past. So I know that you know what it means. But I want you to remember that we live under a covenant with God. Now this covenant was ratified by the shed blood of Jesus at Calvary. Now we see something new that has never existed before. When each of you were born again, you became a new creature in Christ. The two of you together have now become another new creation in Christ because you are now one. When you agree on things, they will come to pass. You'll have an awesome power at your disposal. You're going to notice a new realm of your life, beginning because of a spiritual law that says one can put a thousand to flight, Two can put 10,000 to flight. From this time forward, your everyday life will be 10,000 times more powerful spiritually than ever before. So it's important in these first moments together that you honor the Lord by honoring his table. Now Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. Eat of it. His precious body bore your sicknesses and carried your diseases. The two of you together in the name of Jesus Christ have the God-given faith and the God-given power to ward off sickness, disease, the storms of life, and everything that hell would present to any marriage. Through the broken body, you have received into your hands the awesome power of Almighty God. You may eat. Jesus also said that this is my blood that ratifies the covenant. Drink of my blood, and as often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. So as you drink today, I want you to remember what he's already done for you. I want you to remember the covenant that he has made available to you, the power that he has made yours. You may drink. Alrighty, at this time, Daryl and Rhonda are going to light a unity candle, which will represent the symbolic blending together of their two lives into one.
Galatians chapter 3 says that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us so that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might be heirs of the promise of the Spirit. First Peter chapter 3 says a man and his wife are heirs together of the grace of life. So I'm going to read to you now your blessing. This is your inheritance from the Word of God, so listen very carefully. According to Deuteronomy chapter 28, all of these blessings will come on you and overtake you if you will hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon all of thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself as he hath sworn unto thee. If thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all people of the earth shall be called, shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. That means you can't be broke. Amen. Amen. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Sir. You may now salute your bride. Please turn and face this congregation. Ladies and gentlemen, may I proudly present to you Mr. and Mrs. Daryl Bowen. Put this in your right hand. Thank you, Brad. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mr. and Mrs. The French name, of course. Daryl Boltzmann Jr. Come on, give it up. All right, come on now. Oh, tell a little bit.
the one that supports me and what I feel like no one else does. And I hope I've done my duties towards you as your maid of honor. And I would, I would do everything all over again because you're worth it. I love you and congratulations. Yeah. Okay. Now present, present my best before thee. Now go out into this world and display my glory. 
And the whole time I'm staring into the eyes of my future. I see treasures within me that can set the chill bumps that roll down my sleeves free. Portraits of an angel. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba.
Christmas. 